thanks so much for joining us today on The Community Producers. Renowned visual artist Roy Henry Vickers has won the Order of Canada, the Order of BC, the Silver Medal of Bravery, and um, the, the Queen's Silver and Golden Jubilee Medals. His work has been gifted by Canada to uh, Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II, and his work has also been gifted to all the Commonwealth and non-Commonwealth countries. I'm very excited to present a conversation today with Roy Henry Vickers. Roy, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm coming to you from the land of the Gitsan people on the banks of the beautiful Skeena River, and it's a pleasure to speak to community. Yes, and I, it's such a beautiful place that you live. I, I, I see uh, some of your posts on social media. They're so beautiful of the river, and uh, it just looks like such a peaceful, beautiful place to live, Roy. Yeah. Now, um, I think we should start with uh, your history. Uh, your history is pretty fascinating. Um, you've, you've done so much, you've accomplished so much. So let's start first with a bit of your history. And if you could also um, tell us how you became an artist and, and did it start in childhood? Wow, that's 75 years of history. I don't even know where to start. Uh, I was born on the banks of the Nass River, not far from here, and uh, come from the little village of Kitkatla, where my mother taught. My mother's parents emigrated to Canada from England, and mom was born in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And my father comes from the village of Kitkatla, and his ancestry is Hiltzuk, Simshan, and Haida. So I have all of those ancestors behind me. and. Uh, my early life in the village was uh, a life with no electricity. Um, all, we we worked and we caught fish and we hunted deer and uh, packed water to the house. So those early years were years of learning about my connection to the environment. Little did I know how much that would serve me later in life. When I was nine years old, my family moved here, where I'm living now, to Hazleton, B.C. And uh, I lived on this river and got to know people from inland and got to love the smell of cottonwood trees in the spring, which is happening right now. When I was 16, the family moved to Victoria, and I went away to residential school in Alberta for a year to a place called Three Hills and uh, caught up to my family when I was 17 in Victoria and uh, went to Oak Bay High School and graduated from Oak Bay High School and lived 45 years on Vancouver Island. Wow. <laughs> wow. And uh, so what brought you to the art world when you were younger? How did you first make that connection with art? Well, um, art is part of all of our lives. Uh, as a child growing up, I, I lived in a village where people sang and danced and community got together for all big holidays and people dressed up, people told stories. And then I grew up and I came across discrimination in Victoria when I was 17 years old. I actually turned 18 that summer and I didn't know what it was about. My mother was white, but I didn't know that. My father was what we said in those days, Indian. And I still like that term, you know, you don't play cowboys and indigenous, uh, it's cowboys and Indians. So I, I grew up not knowing what discrimination was about at all. And so when it came across me, I wondered why. And that wondering led me on a journey of discovery of my roots as an Indigenous person in British Columbia. And I've spent 50, 60 years studying the cultures of the Pacific Northwest. And that is what led me to my art, because I realized that if, if I'm going to teach ignorant people who are discriminating against me because of the color of my skin, and I know that I come from an incredibly wonderful culture that is land-based, then it's incumbent upon me to share my knowledge with the world. So I'm still doing it. 
Yeah. And your art is so beautiful and so inspiring. Um, you work from inspiration. Um, I, I'm always so inspired by your work, um, Roy. I just wanted to ask you um, about the different mediums you like to work with as an artist. There's there's several mediums you work with. I'm wondering what led you to those mediums in those formative years. Wow, uh, man, there's so much, so many stories in that question. Um, I started out drawing, and uh, then I graduated to paint by numbers. My family and friends knew that if you wanted to make Roy happy for his birthday or Christmas, just give him a paint by number set. Um, and little did I know that would help me to be the screen print designer that I am today. Uh, I started painting with oils and I, they were disgusting, the smell of them and the use of them and the long time it took them for them to dry. So I switched to acrylic and I love acrylic because once it's dry, it's impervious. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but I, it's a natural progression. When you grow up with music, which to me is the most incredibly powerful form of art, it, it's ingrained in you. And so I come from a culture where art spoke to everyone all of the time. And uh, it's in my DNA. It's, it's amazing what you've done with your art. Um, over the years, you've created major works. Um, one of the works that I was exposed to, uh, Eagle Moon, um, what I saw on a postcard and, and I loved it so much I bought it immediately but we'll get to that in a moment but I just wanted to ask you about you know I just wanted to talk about the 1987 uh, Commonwealth Summit that was a special year for you because um, Her Royal Highness uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II uh, gifted your work to all the Commonwealth and non-Commonwealth countries what an honor that must have been but I I I thought about just your career and all the accolades and the honors that you've received. And I, I really am interested in hearing about some of the people who have shaped you over the years and how you came to be Roy Henry Vickers, um, how, how some of those mentors may have helped you along the way. Well, we don't have enough time to talk about all of that. Um, hmm. And there are so many mentors over the seven and a half decades that I've been alive that I, I wouldn't even know where to start. My mm -hmm. grandfather, Henry Vickers, um, taught me to look at the land and to see what most people don't see. He would ask me over and over, so what do you see there, Roy? And I'd say, oh, the trees and the sky and, and the ocean. And he'd bat his eyes at me and say, well, that's all you see? Take another look and tell me what you see. So I'd take another look and uh, I would see more. And so he taught me to look at the land and appreciate what the land is for me. Roy, I've been so inspired by your work. Um, you've created so many popular uh, works of art. The first uh, piece that I ever saw of yours was Eagle Moon, a very special piece. And I purchased it and I've loved it for many years. Um, and there was another very special piece, Siwash Rock, that you created. And I'm just wondering if you could take us through the process of, of creation, uh, what that's like for you, maybe starting with Eagle Moon and then moving towards uh, Siwash Rock. Eagle's Moon um, was an incredible experience. I was living on the beach in Tofino and I had a friend who lived on the beach there and he had a telescope in his living room. I went to visit him one day and he showed me a photograph of an eagle with what appeared to be a moon behind it. And he asked me, uh, what do you think of this photograph? And I looked at it and I couldn't understand what it was about. Knowing what my grandfather taught me and looking at the eagle, I could see it wasn't a moon behind the eagle because I could see the detail and light on the front of the eagle. So I just said, uh, well, that can't be the moon behind the eagle because I can see the feathers on the front of the eagle. And he smiled and he showed me the telescope and he showed me his little camera 
He said, well, see that spruce tree over there? There is a, that eagle was sitting in the top of the spruce tree and I went over to my telescope and put my camera on the telescope and snapped the picture. And so this, the circular image is the circular image of the telescope. So I went away from that smiling. He said, what do you think? Do you think you could do something with that? And it was, I went back to my studio and created Eagle's Moon. Ah, oh, and I love it. I, I, I watched Rock was a, a part of a, the Vancouver series. And during those days, I was um, telling my story in images. And when I was a boy visiting my mother's father, Grandpa Freeman in Vancouver, he would read to me from The Legends of Vancouver by E. Pauline Johnson. And I loved the stories. And the one story I loved the most was the story of uh, Siwash Rock. And in the Coast Salish language, um, E. Pauline Johnson refers to the name that the Coast Salish use uh, means clean fatherhood but she didn't use the name. So I've never learned what the word is that means clean fatherhood. But when I went to work on Siwash Rock, it was my grandfather reading to me from the legends of Vancouver and my relationship to Chief Dan George. And Dan taught me to speak from my heart. That's what he told me when I was a young man. And he was referring to my art, uh, speaking with my art. And so when I wanted to paint uh, Siwash Rock, that's what came up, was the sunset behind the rock, um, the story of the chief who was turned to stone, and that's what Siwash Rock is, and the woman and her child that were turned to stone to help the Coast Salish people always to remember the story and the stories that Dan told me and the mentorship that I got from him uh, impressed it upon me to put the image of his face in the shadow of Siwash Rock and that's how Siwash Rock came to be born. That's special. That's really special. Now uh, you've also created a work of art that just floored me when I first saw it. I'd never seen it before, and I just saw it about a week ago. I'm talking about the the album gift box set that you created for The Grateful Dead, and, and you were nominated for a Grammy Award, even though you're a visual artist for that work. Um, you must have been very excited when you realized what you had created. It's, it's groundbreaking and innovative. I've never seen it, um, an album uh, work, uh, artwork like that. Um, I've seen thousands of albums as a, as a Polaris, Juno, and uh, Downbeats uh, critics poll judge. And, I, and what I'm telling you is, <laughs> is stunning work, um, beautiful work, inspirational. <laughs> it really moved me. It really honestly did, Roy. I'm not making this up. And so you created this incredible work for the Grateful Dead. What was their reaction when they saw it? They must have been very moved by it as well. Um. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a number of years in production. It began with uh, the iconic images of the Grateful Dead. I wasn't working with them. I was working with Rhino Records and, and the women at Rhino Records who, who run the whole operation. And we worked back and forth for a long time. And eventually, in telephone conversations, they just said, look, uh, can you just please tell the story the way you want to tell it and forget about iconic images of the Grateful Dead? And when they did that, that released me to be Roy Henry Vickers, the artist, and um, to speak to what it is that they were looking for. And so the idea of the treasure box came to be because the treasure box amongst the coastal peoples is an allegory for our treasures that are given to us in song and dance, as well as artwork. And so to 
massive concerts of the Grateful Dead were done in a number of CDs, and they all became part of what's inside the treasure box when you open it. And uh, everybody loved it. Yeah. So, um, listen, uh, you, I'm always curious to know what you're working on in your studio. What are you currently working on um, at the moment? Is, is there anything that you're currently working on? Or are you taking I'm, work, I'm always working on something. It's That's my life, is working with inspiration, and I'm always inspired. Um, I stay close to the land and the creator, and so inspiration's always coming. Right now, I'm working on 12 images of 18 images uh, for a book called Ben, the Sea Lion. And it's a story that I've told uh, for decades, and of all the books that are out there, all I hear from my children whenever a new book comes out is, well, Dan, when are you going to do the story of Ben? So <laughs> I'm working on Ben right now. Wonderful. And we should also mention that you have another book um, launch coming up very soon. Do you just want to mention um, that? Is, is A is an, A is for anemone, is that right? Yeah. It is for anemone. Yes, it'll yeah. be out uh, this month, and uh, hopefully by the time it's out, uh, I'll be completed the works on the story of Ben. A is for anemone is the alphabet as illustrated by a West Coast artist. Wonderful. I can't wait to see it. And, you know, you have a lot of books that you've created over the years. They're all on your website, of course, um, along with your amazing. Um, but you've created many books over the years. And, and so uh, this is just another one of them. And, and it looks like that this is something that you're also very actively involved with is creating books. Yeah. So it's, it's quite amazing to see this. Um, and uh, so I wanted to ask you about your art gallery in Tofino. Um, it's pretty special. I loved it when I saw it. It's it, you can see the care that you've put into it. It's uh, it's so incredibly done. Um, the artwork too, just inspirational. Talk about your art gallery. Well, the art gallery was opened in on April Fool's Day in 1986. I designed it after the traditional longhouses of my ancestors. And um, somewhere around 15 million people from all over the world have been through the gallery. The front of the gallery is a massive eagle because as the eagle totem behind me is, it's my crest. And uh, it was a challenge for me to create the gallery um, because at the time, in the 80s, I was frustrated with uh, purveyors of my art because they were interested in all of, the, all of the stories when I first began. And once I became popular, they were interested in getting the prints and giving, my mom, giving me my money and saying goodbye. So I became disillusioned because really my art was never created for money. It was created to illustrate my love of the culture of the Pacific Northwest and to teach those who don't know. So the challenge was put to me to create a gallery and to put it together and make it work the way I want it to work. And so Roy Henry Vickers Gallery exists here and it's been a, a popular place, and it actually began the movement in Tofino to uh, open their arms to the tourists who came there because fishing and logging was dying, and uh, 1986 was Expo. And the year after I opened the gallery was when my painting was given to Queen Elizabeth, the painting, A Meeting of Chiefs. So the gallery became very, very popular, and it still is. Yes, I neglected to mention it was a meeting of chiefs that was gifted to all the Commonwealth and non-Commonwealth countries. Is that right, Rory? Yeah? I was, it was granted, uh, there was a print that went to each prior of the then 48 countries of the Commonwealth. 
It never right. went to any non-Commonwealth leaders. Oh, I see. Okay. So I, I had that wrong. So thanks for correcting me. Yeah. Well, um, so you've, you've created all these incredible works of art over your, your lifetime. And, um, I, I, you know, we, we've spoken about it. Um, is there anything that I, that I haven't touched upon that you would just like to share? I, you know, your vision is so beautiful. Um, maybe you could just talk about your um, vision going forward in the future. Well, my, uh, the core of my teaching today is about um, the atrocities uh, that have been for my Indigenous ancestors and how the cycle of addiction and abuse continues, how we have such great difficulty with uh, the colonial way of doing things. And one of the greatest freedoms that I have in my life is to turn to the land and the teachings of my ancestors and to value the land that I live in. And today we have so much attention now being given to Indigenous peoples. And one of the great lessons that we can learn from those who've lived here for thousands. My village is over 5,000 years old, long before colonizers ever came to Canada. It was a successful place. So there are ways of being on the land and a, a priceless understanding or an understanding of the pricelessness of nature. And as Chief Seattle put it, what we do to nature or to the web of life, we do to ourselves because we are part of the web of life. The greatest teaching that I, I know of is that we, are, we all can be traced back to one gene, everyone, red, yellow, black, and white, no matter what culture, there's only one race of human beings. And the very word racism is an ignorant term. How can there be racism if there's only one race? So if we can come to understand that, and we can understand that the DNA of our ancestors runs through our veins in our blood, and they are part of the land, then we will walk on the land and take care of the land like it is our family, like it is ourselves. So that's a... There's two things there. The, the, the great teaching is that we are one. We are all one. And we're in this canoe called Mother Earth. And the more we pull together and work together with this knowledge, the greater life will be for every member of the human race. Beautifully said, Rory. I don't see how I can speak after that. That's just beautiful and can't be put any just beautiful. And, and um, as you say, um, we, as a culture here in Canada and in North America and globally, um, with, with colonialism and what it's done to the First Nations people and Indigenous peoples of, of the world, um, there's so much work to do uh, to overcome the damage that's been done. And um, I'm hoping that going forward with great artists like you, um, that with your message that you can help to um, dispel um, some of the ignorance out there and help people understand um, the true uh, essence of what's important. And I, I think you've done that today, Roy. I really do. And I just want to thank you for your incredible um, artwork. Um, it's, it's, it truly has inspired me for decades. It's been such a, an honor and um, a thrill to get to, to speak to you today. And um, so I guess I'll just close it off and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, are there any last um, thoughts that you want to add or, or was that enough? <laughs> oh, I, I think we've, we've covered quite a bit here in a very short period of time. Yeah. Uh, I, we are all teachers. We are all healers. We are all visionaries and we are all leaders. So the more we learn enables us to heal and it's healing that we need more than anything else in the world. 
the more we heal, the more alive our knowledge becomes. So then as visionaries, our vision is made clear by the healing and the knowledge. Then when we look to the north, the way of the warrior, the way of the leader, which we all are, we know that we are standing in the strength and the truth and beauty of who we are. And it's important to come to that place every time we communicate with people. And so I share this love of the world and the love of creativity and the love of nature with, with everyone I possibly can. And I thank you for uh, making it possible to do that here. Well, thank you, Roy. Thanks so much for joining us today. I I'll just look forward to all the incredible artwork that you're going to be creating in, in the future years ahead. And I'll, I'll look forward to seeing it and enjoying it and um, reveling in it and appreciating it. Thanks so much uh, for joining us today, Roy. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, thanks again and, um, for your wise words and uh, vision going forward. Thanks again. <laughs>